Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MST.TV. And for this segment, we are doing rulings. And the topic of the day would be restrictions of the meta decks. I'm going to be talking about uh, Eldritch. We're going to talk about Adamancipators. And we'll talk about Mermail since Mermails are uh, newer to the scene. But you're probably going to see more and more of them as we come up because they are the hand loop deck of the format. They are very strong. If you let them go off, you're just going to die usually uh, it's because they're just very little counterplay if they successfully execute their combos. That being said, we're going to be talking about restrictions from both all three of these decks because all three of these decks, uh, they either lock you in into a specific type of summon or they cut off your battle phase. And uh, if you're going to be playing online right now, if you're using a manual based simulator, you'll probably see illegal plays occur. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are playing in these online tournaments. You guys don't want these illegal plays to be the definition of why you lost. And if you're playing with an automated simulator, it leads to some of the more funky plays where someone just does something and passes their turn. It's because they forgot about certain restrictions that didn't let them summon a certain way. So this is for you guys to be aware of so you won't screw up anymore. And I swear I've never done any of those mistakes myself ever, you know? ever. Let's start with Eldritch. Eldritch, they have about two types of restrictions. One is locking into zombie summoning only, and the second one is you cannot declare an attack except with zombie monsters. Typically, this isn't a big issue. However, in a more complicated game state where Curse of Eldritch comes up later, people tend to start to forget, especially in a manual simulator or in an automated simulator. It's hilarious because they go into these big plays and they go into battle phase and then they skip their battle phase, which is great. First card in question is Cursed Eldland. This is the battle phase restriction for you because, well, it's not really battle phase, but rather you're limited on what you can attack with. It states on the very first line of Cursed Eldland, you cannot declare attacks except with zombie monsters. So in a pure build, you are still affected by this because you run machines in your extra deck. You run Gustav Max, you run Liebe, and it's exceptionally funny when uh, you're using an automated simulator, especially on, on the automated ones, because on the non-automated ones, you gotta tell your opponent, hey, you can't attack with these guys. But on the automated ones, you see them go into like, uh, they're going to Gustav Max, they burn you for 2k. Okay, that's cool. And then all of a sudden they go into Libe and they attempt to attack for game with the 6k to the face, but that doesn't happen. And then they put up the question mark, like, hey, why can't I attack? And it's like they didn't even read their own card. So then they have the pass turn. The best part is they got rid of their own the Eldritch, the Golden Lord. So all the back row is basically dead. And now you have a free turn to completely kill your opponent with zero repercussions to stop you. So that's... That's why it's really fun. But uh, yeah, on the other hand, of course, if you're gonna be playing on a manual simulator, then you have to call out your opponent on this. And it's not as funny, guys. It's just kind of boring. For the Eldlixir, remember that they have a restriction on, after they successfully resolve, uh, you are no longer able to special summon anything except for zombie monsters. In a pure build, it's not really that big of a deal as long as you're just trying to maintain control and try to push for game only using zombie monsters. That's cool, but if you're trying to push with, say, Liebe, Gustav Max, that's something you can't really do. If you activate White Destiny during your own turn, typically you have good control, but sometimes you forget and you use Black Awakening and you summon out your zombie monster in defense mode. Remember, it has to be defense mode for the Black Awakening. And then you try to do your combo, that's not gonna fly and someone's gonna call you on it. But it's like, it's less likely that you're gonna see someone do this on an automated one because the automated one you'll just see like, hmm, they're committing a lot of resources onto the field and not really going anywhere with it. But if you're gonna be playing the invoke side, I don't think it's too big of an issue. Just like, even as just a decent uh, Eldritch player would know that typically you wanna activate everything that special summons uh, during your opponent's end phase to just avoid all these kinds of restrictions so that you're free from these restrictions by the time your turn starts. And that's probably one of the most crucial things you should be uh, keeping in mind of, just in case. Okay, next architect, Ad Emancipators. Originally, this deck didn't have any type of restriction for what they can or cannot special summon. There's nothing really blocking them in the battle phase either, but that was only until Cody Angelov decided to introduce Goku Go into the deck and completely strip out the deck of most of its uh, 
eggs and gemstones that are unrefined with uh, a more established onomatopoeia and, well, go, go, go engine. So now we do have a battle phase restriction and we even have a summoning restriction. If you actually do things incorrectly, you'd be locked into summoning exceed summoning only. And I think a lot of people that just try the deck out for the very first time, they are the ones that are making these types of mistakes. But first let's explain a card that a lot of you guys are confused about, Onomatopera. It's the search card that searches two of Yuma's cards. I would get, I was gonna say stutter cards, but that sounded a little mean. Okay, the card text of Onomatopera states, you can only activate one Onomatopera per turn. Send one card from your hand to the graveyard, add up to two uh, of these monsters from your deck to your hand. Now you cannot add two from the same category. And the categories are as follows. One Zoop of a monster, one Gagaga monster, one Go 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 monster, and one Dodo -do -do monster. Okay, so what happens when you add a monster like uh, Utopic Onomatopoeia? Now, Utopic Onomatopoeia, this card is always treated as a Zubaba Gaga Ga, Go 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 and Dodo -do card. So does that mean this card automatically satisfies all of them and you can't add any other card? You don't need to think about it that way. If you think about it that way, that's why you're probably thinking like, yeah, you shouldn't be able to add any more cards if you add that one card. The thing is, you look at it like a checklist. You look at it like a checklist. You have a Zubaba, Ga Ga Ga, Go Go Do Do Do. And whichever one that you you search for, you cross it off for the, whichever category that you use it to satisfy. And then now you still have all the other ones available. So if you treat it as a Zubaba, that means you can still go with the Go Go and the Do 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 and that's still fine. And that also means for Go 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 Do Do Do, like uh, Go 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 Do 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 Dwarf, whatever that one is, that one could either be either or. So if you cross one off, can you search a second copy of that monster? Sure you can. It didn't say you can't search the same monster, you just can't search out of the same category that you've already satisfied. That's all it really means. So as whatever you can satisfy in that type of a checklist situation, that should make sense to you guys, so maybe we won't get any more complaints about that. Now for the restrictions, the summon base restrictions are often caused by resolving monsters such as Utopic, Onomatopoeia, or Zubaba Poncho. And for the battle phase restriction, you're probably caused by resolving the effects of Gogoko Gigas after uh, it used its own effect to summon itself out of the graveyard. You should avoid locking yourself into an Xyz only play for the rest of the turn if you're going to be using Utopic Onomatopoeia or the monster of Zubaba Poncho. Now, Utopic Onomatopoeia, when you summon a bunch of monsters from your hand, that's when you lock yourself into XC summoning only. In fact, you should only be special summoning out this monster through the Go 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 Glove instead. And as for if you are playing Zubaba Poncho, make sure you don't summon the monster out of the graveyard. If you don't do those things, you won't be locked in and you won't appear like a total fool in front of your opponent because it really shows how noob you are. For Go 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 Gigas, just, just two things to keep in mind. First of all, remember that you cannot conduct your battle phase if you do summon out from the graveyard. I've seen people like, oh, do full combo and kill your opponent. Um, Yeah, it shouldn't happen. The second one is, this one's actually more for uh, a more complicated game state if you actually somehow push the game far enough into the future where you have a Gigas in the graveyard and you somehow manage to special summon out a copy of a Google -Go -Go Glove because of one of your uh, Ad Emancipator uh, excavators. When that happens, uh, you summon out the Google -Go -Go Glove, get the Gigas, you somehow activate it and summon it onto the field. That cannot happen. I know you want to go into the Dweller really badly, but you just don't because it cannot summon itself out during main phase two. This is usually a follow-up play after a kill has somehow failed and they want to retaliate. If you really want to go into that Dweller using that particular monster, uh, then don't go into your battle phase. Before I continue, I want to bring attention to Limited Series Custom and a map that has been released there by Dank Deals. Okay, Dank Deals, they commissioned me into making a new Minerva map for them, and I did. So they have the beautiful black and gold, or if you're feeling a bit more uh, thrifty, you can go ahead and get the limited edition rose gold of this map. This is artwork done by me. I haven't done art in a very long time for other people. I always do stuff for myself. So uh, Hector's a close friend of mine and uh, I decided to bring the pen back out and did something for them. It's really cool. I signed it. It's going to be printed on there as well. So check it out. It's really cool. And uh, if you guys want some artwork done by yours truly, go ahead and check out that map. Anyways, back into the rulings. Into the Mermail territory. 
The three cards that set up restrictions in this particular deck would be Marine Sesquoil Anemone, we have a self-regulating one which is Fishborg Launcher, and the Battle Phase Skipper and the Hand Ripper known as Moulin Glacia. Now I want to get into a bit more depth with Moulin Glacia because there have been some level of cheating involved with this card due to misinformation. Starting with Coral Anemone, uh, her restriction is that if you use her effect, you're going to be locked into Special Summoning Out Water Monster only. And that's only after you use her effect, so if you set up anything ahead of time, that's fine. You put up the Appaloosa early. But in any other case, if you're just going to be using her as the starting play, make sure you don't go into cards like Appaloosa. See it online. People want to get rid of, say, the extra Bahamut Shark. They want to get rid of the Crystal High Clifferbacks, and you know, Needle, like, just getting rid of all these cards is great because Appaloosa provides you with additional negates. And as after you rip your opponent's hand apart and having four negates to their four cards, it feels really good. But that's not an option available. Uh, not if you use Coral Anemone as a start. And you, if you go into Crystal High Clifferbacks and you're already holding your Fishborg Launcher, you cannot summon out the Jet Synchron out of your deck so that's another limitation and for some people that run Borloid Savage in the deck because it's really easy to summon um, just remember you cannot summon it out if you start off with the play yeah and there's also the Bujin monster uh, Hashima that's also not an option if you start with a uh, Coral Anemone and I know it's really easy to summon out these monsters and it's quite easy to forget sometimes especially when you're in the midst of the combo you look in your opponent's hand yeah he's getting ripped apart and he has nothing to do it's easy to forget. And the second card is Fishborg Launcher. Fishborg Launcher, some people are running Formula Synchron in their deck, and just remember that if you're using Fishborg, you can't summon up Formula Synchron because Fishborg can only synchro into water monsters. But that being said, Fishborg does not have any restriction as a link material. And with that, you can use it to go into Appaloosa just fine. And that's one restriction that is pretty decent. And just keep in mind, if you have a Jet Synchron in the graveyard, you can't summon this card out from the graveyard because this card has a self-summoning effect from the graveyard, much like Glow Bulb. But the only condition is that you can only have water monsters in the graveyard uh, when it happens, and you have to have another water monster aside from itself. So that's the self-regulating part. And finally, we head to Moulin Glacia. Now for Moulin Glacia, the last line is the thing that I'm really caring about, which is if this face-up card leaves the field, skip the battle phase of your next turn. The wording here has to be very specific because there has been the old school cheat that kind of came back in the manual simulators. That annoys me to no end because it's some level of misinformation that people are actually using to cheat and uh, I don't approve of it at all. Okay, the correct way to apply Moulin Glacia's effect is that it remembers when it was removed from the field and from that point where it, Moulin Glacia was removed from the field face up, the next turn's battle phase for you, that's the battle phase that would get skipped. And typically, when it comes to skipping a battle phase, you must attempt to enter the battle phase in, other, in order for it to acknowledge that you've attempted to enter it and the battle phase gets skipped. However, in Moulin Glacia's case, it states that skip the battle phase of your next turn and because of that statement of your next turn it only checks during that particular block and if you say forgot to skip your battle phase for instance uh, of your next turn and you try to enter the battle phase the turn after that battle phase uh, would not get skipped because it was only applying to the previous block. Now where does the confusion stem from and where is this cheating coming from? So what is this cheat? This cheat is basically someone telling you, hey, your Moulin Glacier got removed from the field and you forgot to skip the battle phase. Therefore, you have to skip the battle phase of the turn, whatever. It carries over. The carries over is the thing that they kept on saying. And they are wrong for Moulin Glacier's case because Moulin Glacier's case specifically state the battle phase of the next turn. And since that's the only applied block, uh, of time, which it would make sense, anything else after would not make sense for Moulin Glacia. Why are they actually saying that it needs to carry over? Well, that actually stems from older cards like Frozen Soul and Great Long Nose. Their wording is different from Moulin Glacia because their battle phase skipping text states, 
if this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life points, your opponent skips their next battle phase. It doesn't say skip the battle phase of the next turn, it says skips their next battle phase. And battle phase is something that you must attempt to enter, and if they don't attempt to enter it, then yes, that particular part would carry over until they actually remember it. So yes, yeah, so they if they don't enter the battle phase, then they, they mess up. This is actually something that's going to be really annoying to the game state, but remember, the whole thing of next turn is a very important part of the card text and your next battle phase is a different kind of context and so make sure if you forget to skip your battle phase during your next turn for Mulan Glacier's effect specifically and you try to enter the battle phase the turn after which it was supposed to be skipped note that your battle phase will not get skipped okay yeah it's different from Frozen Soul to Mulan Glacier all right we're clear on that no more cheating all right guys and that's all i got for this video if you guys enjoyed this video learn the thing or two hit that thumbs up button make sure your opponent and everyone's maintaining the game state because i know these restrictions they're going to be something that a lot of people overlook and even i've overlooked them personally online and made some really dumb misplays i'm glad i'm using a fake name for those ones <laughs> oh you wouldn't even know that i was the one that made those really ugly plays box of toms and until next time don't forget to hit subscribe ding notification bell and i think i got some pretty awesome stuff coming up this week some really cool discussion that i really want to bring to the table so make sure you guys subscribe for that and i'll see you guys in the next one hey guys it's tom box welcome to msd.tv how are you guys doing it's been a while that since we've done a